The attack came without warning, and according to a U.S. government source, told CBS News that it has Middle East terrorism written all over it. The attack in Oklahoma City appears to have a familiar mark. This was done with the attempt to inflict as many casualties as possible. That is a Middle Eastern trait. The fact that it was such a powerful bomb in Oklahoma City immediately drew investigators to consider deadly parallels that all have roots in the Middle East. ABC News has learned that the FBI has asked the U.S. military to provide up to 10 Arabic speakers to help in the investigation. Orientalism tries to answer the question of why, when we think of the Middle East, for example, we have a preconceived notion of what kind of people live there, what they believe, how they act, even though we may never have been there or indeed even met anyone from there. More generally, Orientalism asks, how do we come to understand people, strangers, who look different to us by virtue of the color of their skin? The central argument of Orientalism is that the way we acquire this knowledge is not innocent or objective, but the end result of a process that reflects certain interests. That is, it is highly motivated. Specifically, Said argues that the way the West, Europe and the US, looks at the countries and peoples of the Middle East is through a lens that distorts the actual reality of those places and those people. He calls this lens through which we view that part of the world Orientalism a framework that we use to understand the unfamiliar and the strange, to make the peoples of the Middle East appear different and threatening. At the heart of how this new American Orientalism operates is the threatening and demonized figure of the Islamic terrorist that is emphasized by journalists and Hollywood. The so-called independent media in a liberal society like this, in effect, are so lazy and are controlled by interests that are commercial and political at the same time, that there, there is no investigative reporting. It's just basically repeating the line of the government. Only eight days ago, I concluded a broadcast on the World Trade Center bombing by telling you what senior U.S. law enforcement officials were telling us, that the threat of Muslim extremists operating within the United States is an ongoing danger, something we'll have to live with from now on. And repeating the lines of the people who have the most influence for whom Islam is a useful uh, foreign uh, demon to turn attention away from the inequities and problems in our own society. So as a result, the human side of the Islamic and, and especially the Arabic world are rarely to be found. Uh, and, and the net result is this vacancy on the one hand and these easy, almost automatic images of terror and violence. The situation in the popular media is, is basically that Muslims are really two things. One, they're villains of one sort, villains and fanatics. I will dispatch the American people to the hell they deserve. And B, many films end up with huge numbers of bodies, Muslim bodies strewn all over the place, the result of Arnold Schwarzenegger or Demi Moore, Chuck Norris, Lots of films about guerrillas going in to kill uh, Muslim terrorists. So the, so the idea of Islam is something that, to be stamped out. Now, Saeed recognizes that terrorism exists as a result of the violent political situation in the Middle East. But he argues that there is a lot more going on there that is misunderstood or not seen by the peoples of the West. The result of the media's focus on one negative aspect alone means that all the peoples of the Islamic world come to be understood in the same negative and paranoid way. That is, as a threat. So that when we think of people who look like that and who come from that part of the world, we think fanatic, extreme, violent. Said argues that understanding a vast and complex region like the Middle East in this narrow way takes away from the humanity and diversity of millions of ordinary people living decent and humane lives there. It's easy to attract attention, and certainly the media's attention, for some of the political reasons that are obvious. I mean, to discredit the Arabs, to make them seem like a threat to the West, uh, to keep uh, the idea around at the end of the Cold War that, you know, there are uh, foreign devils. Otherwise, what, what are we doing with this gigantic military? And the result is 
uh, it's very hard to find works that are sympathetic to the Arabs in Islam. Islam is seen as the enemy of Christianity, and the United States sees itself as a Christian or Judeo-Christian country in affiliation with Israel, and that Islam is the great enemy, the, the, the competitor. There's a, there's a history of that. The challenge now is, is the challenge, I, I, I wouldn't call it um, anything other than coexistence. How, do, how does one coexist with people whose religions are different, whose traditions and languages are different, but who are, who form part of the same community or polity in a national sense. Uh, how do we accept difference without violence and hostility? And it's that attitude I think that we need.